Hey, what's up? It's Evan from PhotoExtremist.com, and in this video, I want to tell you how you can make pictures of people with emotionally ambiguous faces. Now, this is a new technique that I just discovered. It's kind of in the theory land right now. I haven't made a lot of excellent examples yet, but the reason why I'm sharing it is because I want to show it to you so maybe you guys can think of something. Because this technique, hardly anyone uses it, hardly anyone even knows about it. So I want to share it with you today because there are, there's hardly any information on this thing. So here it is. All right, so the fancy name for this technique is called visuospatial resonance or something like that, otherwise known as hybrid imaging. Now the very first person to use this technique, to my knowledge, is Leonardo da Vinci in the Mona Lisa painting. Now what he did is if you look anywhere on that painting, whether it be the eyes or any, any place like that, you will notice that the smile uh, appears to be smiling uh, much more than if you were to look directly at the lips. One, as soon as you look directly at the lips, the smile then begins to, to diminish and it's not smiling as much. The reason why that is, is because what Leonardo da Vinci did is he extended the smile just a little bit and he blurred out the lips uh, at the very ends of them and he just made just a very, very faint, slight smile um, extending outward from the, the clear, defined lips. So what your, your peripheral vision does is it basically sees the blurry parts of the image. But as soon as your eyes look directly at the lips, it now then kind of forgets about the things surrounding the lips, which is the blurry stuff, and it's only looking at the, the specific detail, the actual specific definition of the lips. So that's why you basically have two different pictures. You have the blurry image, and then you have the detailed image. And the blurry image, the smile is bigger, and the detailed image, the smile is not as smiley. It's more neutral. So you can take this technique to the extreme if you want to, and you can take two different pictures. You can take one picture where you're making a certain facial expression and then blur it. And then you can take another picture where you're making another facial expression and then I'll put a, uh, a high pass filter inside of Photoshop and apply that filter onto that picture. So you're only seeing the, de the defined parts of the image, not the blurry stuff. Then what you can do is you can take those two pictures and overlay them on top of one another and now you can look at the picture in two different ways. The first way that you can look at it is where you are standing right in front of your computer monitor and your, your face is about maybe two, three, four feet away from the monitor itself. And you will then be able to see the defined parts of the image very clearly and it will be more obvious that that's what you're looking at. But if you step away about three to eight meters away from your computer monitor, the details then vanish. You can no longer see the details anymore and you can only see the blurry image. So you can have two different types of images on top of one another and view them both separately even though they're right there, they're the same image. You can do this technique with facial expressions. I've done it with facial expressions where one, um, where in one picture I'm smiling and the other picture I'm just blank faced and you can do one where you know you take a picture of an angry man and he's like really angry showing his teeth or something and then take another picture of a woman that's like just kind of smiling or whatever and then combine them and depending on where you are, depending on the distance um, from where you are to, of looking at the photo, you will perceive it differently. And you don't have to do this with just faces, you can do it with anything and that's why I want to show I want to share this technique so I can get people to make stuff up with it and we can see what what we can make out of it so another idea is you can do it with anything really like I did it with the sink I just took a blurry picture of the sink took a detailed image of my hands washing the sink also if you want to get all techno geeky if you are nearsighted and you happen to be wearing glasses you can view the view the picture with your glasses on and you'll see the nice details but if you take your glasses off, you will then usually be able to see the blurry image uh, more or less, usually a little bit more than if you had your glasses on. But that will only work half the time. 
another way to view the picture is to simply zoom out on the picture. So simply just make it bigger or smaller on your computer monitor itself. That way you don't have to physically walk um, away from your computer screen and you can just you know, zoom in and out on the picture and see the different pictures on the picture, which is makes a nice picture. So let's go into Photoshop uh, and I'll show you how to do this specifically. And then I'll also tell you how you can submit your picture so we can all look at them and try to make cool things with them. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is put your two pictures on your computer and now drag the first one over into Photoshop and then select the other one and drag it on top of that one. Push enter. Now, um, what we wanna do is blur one of them and then apply a high pass filter to the other one. So this one, let's blur this one. So let's select it and then click uh, filter blur Gaussian blur and I'm gonna blur it by about 40 pixels and the, this number is arbitrary it just basically it's if your camera has smaller amount of has a smaller amount of megapixels that number is gonna to want to be less and if, if you have more megapixel pixels you're gonna want it, that number to be larger so just click OK it's blurred it's pretty good now let's go to this layer and we want to select this layer and because Photoshop made it a, s a smart layer or something, what we have to do is right click it and then click rasterize layer. Just make it a regular layer um, if that little icon was there. If this icon is here, then you have to do that. If it's not, then you don't have to worry about it. So I just rasterized the layer. Now that I did that, I can apply effects to it. So I can go to filter, other, high pass, click OK. And now you want to uh, select the layer and then in the blending mode options here, you want to click overlay. Now you'll see that it's not looking, I mean, it looks okay for what it is, but we can make it look, I think we can make it look better. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just swap these two layers. I'm going to put the, the top one on the bottom and the bottom one on the top. And I think that does make it look a little different. So in order to do that, I got to get rid of the lock icon, just drag it to the trash can, bring this up to the top layer, and then click the blending modes and then click overlay. So now it looks a little bit better. Um, here was the before and here's the after. It just brings out some of those edges. And now that looks pretty good how it is. Um, if you wanted a little bit more, uh, if, you, if you needed more definition or something, you could just simply duplicate the layer and it would bring it out even more. And another thing that you can do is just click, go on the layer and click auto contrast on the, on the high pass layer and it will also really bring it out and then you could just dim it down using the opacity if you wanted to. So, now that we have this, if you view it from far away, it'll look like I'm angry and if you zoom it in, and look at it closer, it will look like I'm happy. Now if you wanted to make this effect a little bit more subtle, like the Leonardo da Vinci picture, uh, what you could do is grab the original picture, drag it over on top of the picture again, and you want to make sure it's on the top layer and the blending mode is on normal. And now what you can do is simply create a layer mask on that layer and then simply mask out the mouth and now the the only part where the effect is happening is on the mouth itself that way it kind of preserves the picture um, and makes it look more like a normal regular picture rather than a kind of like a cartoon type of thing but each technique works it's just that you may want to experiment with this it's a little bit more obvious it's kind of blobby cartoony looking but the effect is on you know you get the full effect as well with this it's a little bit more subtle so if, if you if this is just something you're playing around with um, you may want to go with the subtle approach and now here's another example I want to show you one more and that's this will be the last example so here's the last one with this one this is very 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 subtle as you can see here, I only got three layers. The first layer, I blurred it, and then I used the liquify tool to 
make the smile a little bit smiley. And then I applied a high pass layer onto it and that made it look kind of, it just added more definition to it. But you can still see the lips um, quite a bit actually. So what I did is I just added another layer on top of it and I just sort of dimmed down the effect of the lips. So that's what you can do if you want to make it look really subtle like the Leonardo da Vinci picture. And this is still very subtle. If you look at the eyes, your peripheral vision will basically see the smile as a little bit more smiley. But if you look at the lips themselves, the smile tends to slightly go away. So that's the, the theory, at least. Um, I hope you guys can come up with some good examples so we can all exchange ideas and look at them and see what we can come up with. Uh, you can submit your pictures to the Photo Extremist Facebook timeline, or um, even better yet, you could submit them to the Photo Extremist Flickr page, and I'll leave links to all, the, all that stuff in the, in the blog article down below. So um, click all that stuff, submit your pictures, and I'll see you in the next video.